good evening. Um, yeah, so as Tim said, my story is a little bit different to everyone else's. Um, but basically, my story um, is the story of storytellers who tell storytellers how to tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, probably doesn't make much sense at the moment, but hopefully all will become clear. So I want to start by taking you back uh, a couple of years um, when I was in the process of applying for my PhD. I um, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to focus on and I was thinking about um, what area of research I wanted to look at. Um, now I'm a musician and my previous degree had been in music psychology. So things like when we listen to music, how does our brain respond? Um, how does it affect us? How do we understand music when we listen to it? Um, and I was fairly sure that I wanted to stay in that sort of area because I found it really interesting and I wanted to know more about it. But I just didn't know what exactly I wanted to focus on. Um, now, my husband's a musician as well, and we were both singing in quite a lot of different choirs at the time. Um, and I noticed that there were a lot of new choirs springing up all over the place as well, um, partly due to people like Gareth Malone, who you might have heard of. Um, and I kept seeing articles extolling the um, physical and mental health benefits of singing in choirs. So I was starting to think that perhaps that would be quite an interesting um, area to look into, um, area of research to focus on but I still didn't know what exactly it was I wanted to look at. Um, and then one evening, we had some friends around to our house. We'd had a few drinks. Um, we were talking about music and about singing, um, and a we were talking a bit about the conductors that we'd known. Um, and one of my friends said, oh, I've seen an article recently um, on the internet, and it was 16 steps to being an absolutely epic conductor. Mm -hmm. um, some of you may have seen the article, but basically he said that all conductors do is they wave their hands around a bit, um, and then um, all you have to do is, you just in the middle of that, you put in things like talking about the enormous fish that you caught over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> or the beautiful glass of wine that you're smelling. Um, or perhaps the enormous sandwich that you're going to eat next. <sighs> and we thought these were quite funny, and we actually recognised a few of them from conductors that we'd known. And we even thought we'd add a couple of our own. So, for example, there's the full windmill... Oh. <laughs> um, or my personal favourite, falling off a cliff backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a good laugh and we were, we were just messing around really, but um, it made me start to think, why do conductors make such strange gestures when they're directing musicians? What are they actually trying to achieve? And that was the jumping off point for my PhD really. I wanted to know more about this interaction that was happening between the conductor and the choir. Um, I wanted to know how this communication worked that involved all these weird gestures and also the words that they spoke um, when they were talking to the choirs. Um, so I thought, yeah, I want to know why this is happening, how it happens, do the choir understand when he's doing, he or she is making all these gestures, how do they respond? So I wanted to answer these sorts of questions. Um, so what I've been doing for the last couple of years now is videoing choir rehearsals um, so that I can look back over the videos and then interviewing conductors um, so I can try and uh, gain their insights into what they think is actually happening during the rehearsals. And at the moment I'm trying to bring all my data together um, and, put it into, and, and bring it together in a way that tries to make sense of what's actually going on. Now I mentioned at the beginning about storytellers and that's because I'm starting to think that conductors are a little bit like storytellers. So they have the basic plot line in front of them, they have the music there with all the dots on the page, but actually they have to take all those notes, those phrases, the different voice parts, all the individual singers, and weave them together into this narrative of the music, make the story of the music. Um, and they have to do that first of all in their heads. So a lot of the conductors that I spoke to talked about really knowing the music, but not only that, they knew what they wanted the music to sound like, they knew what their story they were trying to tell was, how they wanted it to sound at the concert before they'd even started doing the rehearsals. And that meant that a lot of the rehearsal process is the conductor telling the choir the story, telling the choir how they want that music to sound. Um, and that was really interesting. Um, so, for example, conductors use a lot of facial expressions. Sometimes that's giving feedback to the choir, so cheeky thumbs up when they do something right, um, or the, uh, the glare of doom if they do something wrong. 
But actually, a lot of the facial expressions that they use are to do with the emotions in the music. Um, so the anger or excitement or the peaceful tranquility um, or whatever's happening at the time. And those aren't anything, that's not anything to do with keeping the choir together or making sure everyone's singing the right notes in the right places. That's to do with actually making the story of the music come alive for the people who are listening. Um, conductors also use a lot of metaphors and similes when they're talking. Um, if you go to any choir rehearsal, you'll hear them used all the time. Um, so they'll say things like, oh, this bit is where there's a thunderstorm, but then the sun comes out over here. Um, or this bit should sound like a contented sigh. Or this bit should sound like a drunken orgy. <laughs> um, so, but I had one particular example that I thought was really interesting, um, where the conductor was telling the choir the four different materials through which a conductor might conduct. So for fast music, you can conduct through air. So you're not very much resistance. Um, you can move quite quickly. The second material is water, slightly slower, mu move, slightly slower music um, because you've got to work a little bit harder to get your um, hand through the water. The third material is treacle, um, where you have to really start putting quite a lot of effort in and the music gets a little bit slower. But the fourth material is dead sheep, <laughs> 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 which is <laughs> quite random and a bit weird. But <laughs> the quote that I got was, the hardest material to conduct through is dead sheep because you have to wade your way through the muscle and the organs and the haggis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the point was that the conductor was trying to get across to the choir what he wanted the music to sound like at that point. It wasn't just that the music was slow, it was that it was slow and laboured and stodgy. And the, the use of these metaphors and similes puts a really sometimes very vivid image in the choir's head of what the music should sound like and how to portray the music at that point. Another thing that I've noticed when watching my videos um, is that conductors use their eyebrows an awful lot, at least some of them do. Um, so quite often that's when they want to prepare the choir for something that's about to happen. Um, so when conductors want the choir to get louder or to get quieter or to get faster or something, um, they'll make the gesture usually, but the choir should already be doing that when they make that gesture. So they can't do it afterwards. And the eyebrows seem to be a way of preparing the choir for something that's about to happen. It's a, are you watching me? You need to be watching because something's about to happen now. By the way, I should mention that not all conductors are by any means the same. So I had one conductor who used their eyebrows so much that when I marked on my transcript where they went up and down, it look, looked like I'd drawn little snakes wriggling <laughs> across the page. And then I had another conductor who didn't use his eyebrows at all. But that's because he never looked at the choir. He conducted like this. <laughs> Very strange to watch. <laughs> but speaking of the choir, I have, I've been talking about the conductors. I haven't really brought the singers into it very much. Um, but what role do they play? Obviously, they're part of the interaction that I wanted to look at. They respond to the conductor. The conductor responds to them as well. Um, but are they just characters in this story uh, that the conductor is creating? I don't think so. Firstly, because the choir are the ones who are actually creating the music. They're the ones that are actually making the sound. Um, and they're also the ones that the audience are watching. So in a performance, the conductor has their back to the audience. Um, the choir are the ones that they can actually see. So the choir are a really important part of the telling of the story of the music. Um, and the choir, or the individual singers within it, they can't just... Um, just sing their own little part and then ignore everything else and forget about everything else. They need to really understand the whole of that story. Um. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, that's okay. And, and the, the, so the final point that I wanted to make, um, the final point that I've noticed in my, um, in my research, is that the conductors who, just like telling a good tale, the conductors who really believe in their story, in their version of the music, are the conductors who are the best at putting that across to the choir, at telling their story to the choir, and at getting the choir to feel passionate about that story as well. And from my own experience, I can tell you that the best performances are definitely given by the choirs who really believe in the story that they're telling. So, there you have it, the story of storytellers, or conductors, who tell the storytellers, or the choir, how to tell the story of the music. Thank you.